Hey guys, and welcome to your first physical science video. Today we're just going to talk about an introduction to science so you kind of know why we all take science and you know a little bit more about it. Now the first thing, scientists observe and they make observations to try to figure out why things happen. They also also try to answer questions by investigating. And so once they start observing certain phenomena or certain things that are happening in the real world, they start to do an investigation to see why. Then they plan experiments. Once they come up with a theory of why they think something is happening, they'll do an experiment and plan an experiment to see if their theory is correct. And then they always confirm their results. At the end, they confirm whether they were correct or whether they were incorrect. Now, there are several branches of science, and we are under the natural science branch. Um, there are social sciences, but those would be taught in a different area. And so we are taught under the natural science branch. There's biological science, physical science, and earth science. Now, under biolog biological science, you get all different kind of sciences about animals, about plants, about the earth systems. And in physical science, we actually do an introduction to two sciences. We do an introduction to physics and an introduction to chemistry. And then in earth science, that includes um, study of rocks, study of the universe, and study of weather. And there are also some other earth sciences that can come in under those, but these are the ones you're most familiar with. Now the reason I show you those is to remind you that all branches of science work together. Biology needs chemistry, and chemistry needs physics, and physics needs um, biology, and they all work together. Another th two things that work, another two ideas that work together are science and technology. Now, let's look and fill out what technology means. Technology is the application of science for practical purposes. I know when you look at your cell phone, you don't immediately think science. But science is what helped create cell phones and what helps make them better. And scientists are the ones trying to, um, science, uh, scientists and engineers are constantly trying to make our technology better. Now, some characteristic technology. It's usually coming from new knowledge that we've discovered. Um, it's the application of science. It's taking science and actually applying it so it can help us in the real world. Um, technology always makes things faster and easier. Some examples are computers, remote controls, a pen computer. Um, Non-examples would be air, rain, trees, soil, things that were um, already here and things that were not man-made. Now, let's discuss, we just talked about that all the branches of science works together. We talked about that science and technology work together and their relationship. Now we're going to talk about scientific laws and scientific theories. Now, theories explain why something happens and laws describe how something works. Experimental results support laws and theories. So both laws and theories have experiments that will back up what they're saying. Theories and laws are always being tested. Scientists are always trying to test these to, make, to see if they can finalize what they know for sure to be true. Let me give you an example. A scientific law would be the law of gravity. You know that if you are holding a pin above the ground and you drop that or let go of that pin, that pin is going to fall to the ground. No one disputes that. That's a scientific law. An example of a scientific theory um, would be like the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory has some scientific evidence that um, people feel like do support it, but it's still a theory. There are many people that do not believe in the Big Bang Theory, and they do not believe the experiments are correct, and so they believe in another form of um, like creation. And so theories have some experimental evidence, but not enough to be proven. Scientific laws are proven. Now, science skills that we that you guys need and that you guys will be working on developing this semester are identifying problems, planning experiments, recording observations, and correctly reporting data. And these are some of the skills, like I said, that you're going to um, work on and hopefully develop through the semester. Now, critical thinking helps you solve problems logically. 
And critical thinking is the reason why we all take science. Science helps us to really think logically through things, and um, that's why we want to work on that during this class. Now, scientists use a scientific method to solve problems, and this method is a logical method to use so that we can figure out answers to the questions we have. Now, the scientific method does not have to be used just in science. This can be applied to anything in life, like how to fix a car. Um, like if you've got a problem with your car, you have to go through a series of logical steps to figure out what the problem is. That's what the scientific method is. Now, the scientific method always stops, uh, starts with observation, and your observations then form a question usually. You're looking at something, you're observing it, and then it raises questions in your mind about why it works or why it is that way. You then research and collect data about your observations and about your question that you have. You form a hypothesis, which is an educated guess of what you think is happening, and then you test the hypothesis. Testing the hypothesis is the experiment. So out to the side, make sure you know that the experiment is also called testing the hypothesis because that's when you're really seeing if you're correct or not. Then you make observations again so that you can draw conclusions based on your experiment. Now, scientists test hypotheses. We talked about this. This is your experiment. Well, there are different parts of your experiment, and we're going to talk about those today. You have a part of an experiment called a variable, and there are always two variables. You have an independent variable. You have a dependent variable. This is the, um, the independent variable is always the variable that's being tested, okay? So I always, the way I remember it is independent starts with I, and I am one person. And so the independent variable is always the one thing being tested. Um, another way to remember is independent variable starts with I. I am the scientist doing the experiment, and whatever I change is the independent variable. Dependent variable is always the outcome of the experiment. And I want you to write in parentheses that dependent variable is always the measure you take at the end. It's always the measurement or the outcome. Independent variable, I want you to write in parentheses up in your notes, it's always the, uh, an object. It's not a measurement, it's an object. So independent variables and objects, dependent variables and measurement. Now, experiments test ideas that scientists have. Now, I want to give you an example and talk about the different parts of an experiment. So let's say that we want to do an, exam, um, an experiment on plants, and we want to know if fertilizer really works. Does fertilizer really help a plant grow faster um, and taller? And so our question, does fertilizer make a plant grow faster? That's what we're going to test. So constants, and write out in parentheses what this is. Constant is something that stays the same throughout the entire experiment. So if we have two plants and we're wanting to know if fertilizer works, some of the things that are going to stay the same is going to be the type of pot we have. We don't want to have different pots. That's going to make our experiment um, inconclusive because we won't know if the pot helped the plant grow better or if the fertilizer did. So we won't have the same type of pot. We want to have the same type of plant. We're going to water them the same amount. We're going to make sure they both get the same amount of sunlight. We're going to have the same type of soil and so forth. Those are the things that we want to keep the same in the experiment so we don't ruin the experiment or make it inconclusive. Now, the independent variable is always the object that's being tested. The object being tested here is fertilizer. It's always something tangible that you can touch. It's the fertilizer. So dependent variable is always what we measure at the end. So the dependent variable is going to be um, how fast or the time it takes for the plant to grow. Okay. Now, control group. In parentheses, put what control means. Control is always the most normal in the experiment. It's the one that never changes. So the control group is going to be the plant without fertilizer because we're going to use it to compare the results to the plant with fertilizer. Now, recap independent and dependent variable. Let's talk just a little bit more about them. The definition is the variable that you change or that you test in an experiment. Characteristics. Independent variables are always the object you select, and it's the one item being tested. An example of the independent variable is like testing the fertilizer that we just talked about. Um, if we wanted to see if maroon band uniforms were cooler 
than white band uniforms, then the color of the uniforms is what we're testing because that's what we're changing in the experiment. And some non-examples. Um, data stating how much the plants grew. In our plant example, like how high the plant grew, how fast the plant grew, how many leaves it had at the end, those are all measurements. Those cannot be independent variables. Those would all be related to the dependent variable. Now, dependent variable. The definition is the result due to the item that you're testing. So what happens because we tested something? <clears throat> Characteristics. It's always called the outcome. It's always the result of the experiment. And you cannot know the dependent variable at the beginning of the experiment because it's a measurement and you can only take that measurement at the end. Now, an example is our, from our plant um, example earlier, it's the result in plant growth, like how fast the plant grew, measuring time, or how tall the plant grew, measuring height. Um, if we're going back to the band uniforms, a depend, dependent variable would be which color uniform was cooler. And a non-example for dependent variable is going to be um, similar items in the setup. Remember that constants, things that are the same in your A plant and your B plant, are, cannot be dependent variables. Those are constants. And then, for example, our fertilizer, that's what we were testing, and so it can't be the dependent variable. But if you also look, these two things under non-example, they're not measurements. And you're always going to need a measurement or something like that at the end for the dependent variable. Okay, then, now it is time for your summary. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to do um, an ABC summary. That means you're going to take the letters A, B, and C and come up with three important things that you learned in this video or three ways to summarize this video, starting with the letters A, B, and C. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you in class.